Our men's group on Monday is currently studying the book In Search of Timothy by Tony Cook. We recently explored chapter 18 and I found it particularly meaningful. There are some key insights that resonated with me and I'd like to share them with you. It is said that President Franklin Roosevelt sought young men with a passion for anonymity to join his staff while President Ronald Reagan had a plaque in his Oval Office that declared, there is no limit to what a man can do or where he can go if he doesn't mind who gets the credit. Strive to be a harmonious presence within any community, be it a church, a workplace, or among a group of individuals. Prioritize fostering good relationships with others and embody the role of a peacemaker. Encourage and bring up the best in those around you. As expressed in Romans 12, 18, do your part to live in peace with everyone as much as possible. One interpretation of diplomacy is the skill of managing affairs without inciting hostility. Occasionally, individuals may let titles or positions inflate their egos, leading to a domineering and unsympathetic attitude. Mirroring the actions of King Rehoboam, 2 Chronicles 10, 1, 16, King Rehoboam harshly treated his peers by ignoring their pleas for leniency and instead choosing to rule with a heavy hand. He dismissed their concerns and demands, opting for a more domineering and authoritative approach. This led to a sense of alienation and discord among the people, ultimately straining the relationship between the king and his subjects. They may harshly treat their peers, resulting in alienation. Therefore, even if a supportive individual treats the pastor with respect, they will not ultimately be an asset if they repeatedly create discord among the community, leaving the pastor to rectify the mess. The passage in 2 Chronicles 10.7 emphasizes the idea that tending to the needs of others and approaching them with kindness and compassion can foster enduring service and loyalty. Displaying love and goodwill toward others as well as demonstrating submission to authority and teamwork among co-workers is essential in the body of Christ regardless of one's skills or anointing. The ability to cooperate with others not only fosters a productive work environment but also contributes to a sense of well-being and camaraderie among the members. In my personal experiences, I've found that whether it's at work or even during church attendance, I have at times sought any reason to leave, usually because of a struggle with authority or the desire to find an excuse. Perhaps it was because something wasn't done the way I preferred or because someone else seemed inattentive to details that were important to me even as they dealt with their own pressures from their superiors. Disagreements are commonplace as we see in the Bible with Paul, the apostles and the disciples. What I've come to realize as a Christian is that I need to prioritize God in my life, setting aside my pride and personal thoughts and submitting to God's authority and his desires for me. Instead of finding excuses to skip church or quit my job, it's vital for us to seek alignment with God's will. In today's world, where there are numerous denominations and churches, it's important for us to submit ourselves to authority. Let's pray. In Jesus' name, I pray that we may humble ourselves so that your presence and influence may grow in our lives. Sometimes we become too focused on our own identities, pride, and how others perceive us, forgetting that it is your light within us that should shine for others to see. Lord, I ask that we realize that our goal is to lead people towards you, not towards ourselves, away from our egos and pride, and towards your purpose for our lives. Help us to embody your likeness, for the essence of being a Christian is to reflect your image, Christ. Guide us in learning how to emulate you. I commit this time to you. In Jesus' name, amen.